Hello, my name is Colin Greatwood. I'm a mechatronics technology engineer here at Festo, and today I'll be walking you through how you can leverage Festo's I.O. offerings in the CPXE IP20, the CPX APA centralized remote I.O., and the CPX API decentralized remote I.O. for your systems. Here you can see that I'm starting with a CPXE IP20 I.O. slice rack on the top of the screen. On the left hand side, you can see there is a controller, a CPXE CEC. This is an M1 variant, we'll come back to that later. And then there are various IO slices for analog and digital IO in and out, as well as a four IO link slice. To the right of that, I have a Festo 120 volt AC single phase power supply. That's the green, white, and black wires. And then at the top of the screen, you can see that I'm supplying 24 volt DC out to the rest of all, of all the components. On the bottom half of the screen, I have a CPX APA centralized rack. You can see I'm coming out of the EtherCAT master port here and coming into the EtherCAT in port on the left hand side of the CPX APA field bus module. This APA setup has two modules a field bus node on the left and then a four IO link module on the right. Additional IO, digital, analog, and otherwise could be added, as well as various valve terminals. On the top left of the APA field bus module, you can see I have a gray cable plugged in. This is the AP port. This allows me to expand the back plane of the CPX APA rack from these two modules out of the AP port over to my CPX API modules. You can see I have three modules here a 4DI, 4DO, that's four digital in and four digital out module, another one, a second one, and the last one on the far right is an eight digital in with M8 connections. Now it's important to note that I have EtherCAT going over the green cable here to the very first module in APA, and that's serving to scan for the entire rest of the devices. The gray cable, which is Festo's AP proprietary field bus technology, does not need to be configured and is auto-detecting, and I'll show that later. You can see I'm daisy-chaining that from this port to the first port on the API, then out of this second port into the second slice's first port, and so on, all the way to the end, and I leave that last port unconnected. Now that we've gone over the hardware, I'll switch over and show you the ability of Festo Automation Suite to scan very briefly. In Festo Automation Suite, here I have a new project. If I go from the project screen or the home screen here with the little icon, I can go to the device scan section, which is the second tab. If the devices don't show up right away, you can click the refresh button on the right side. Right away, you can see I get my CPXE CEC M1 EP showing up on the top left. So with my CPXE, I can click the little down caret and some additional scanning is performed. In order for more than just the first component to show up, that CEC module, this one here I'll show you on the left, in order for more than just that module to show up, you have to have the Codasys plugin installed. Just as a reminder where that is, you can click the three little slices on the top left and go to repositories. And you can see here, if I go to extensions, I have the Codasys installation here. Now going back to my project, this extension allows me to scan for the rest of the devices. If I expand, you can see here I have my APA EtherCAT module showing up under the scan and all one, two, three, four, five sub-modules of my remote I.O. network showing up as well. And you can see them here. The EC module is the first one on the left, the four I.O. link, M12 module on the right of the APA rack, and then three remote I.O. slices starting with a 4DI, 4DO, M8, 4DI, 4DO, M12, and then last on the right is the eight digital in with M8 connections. If I have that PLC highlighted, I can click add to project. You'll be prompted several times to import the topology. 
So instead of just bringing in this first PLC at the very top, it will detect the IP20 slice rack that we saw earlier, as well as the APA and API modules. And so you get prompted a few times. I was prompted three times here to import all of those devices. If I go back to the project section, the little house in the top left, you can see all of this gets imported. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and reorganize. Notice that it brings in all the devices. There is one small correction I have to make here. I delete this erroneous wire going to the first API module and I'll reconnect that. And now you can see my topology that's both in the topology editor as well as on the left-hand navigator matches what I have in the field. You have the CPXE rack here and you can see the yellow connections are the EtherCAT field bus going to just that first node. And then from the blue port, that AP technology port allows me to connect those API modules far out in, in your machine. Now, if I connect to any of these devices, I can look at the advanced diagnostics of each of them, uh, but this video is not intended to show advanced diagnostics. You can use this project after saving it uh, for troubleshooting in the field or advanced configuration. Now I'll jump over to Codasys and we'll configure things from there. Now, the first thing I'll do after launching code assist is click new project. Since I have the CPXE target support package already installed, this template becomes an option. And I'm just going to show the first template here. I'll put it in my downloads folder and just call it AP demo. Knowing that I'm running version 3.5.16, I will show all device versions and come down to the CPXE CEC M1 EP and pick the 3.5.16 version. I'm not going to be doing any programming, so it doesn't particularly matter which language I use, but I do want the EtherCAT master. Once my template loads, I'm going to make a few PLC level settings first. I'll double click the device in the top left, scan my network, and you can see my CPXE CEC M1 EP. I verify that the target version matches what I've been trying to add to my project 3.5.16.40. I press OK. Once I have the green light here on the right, that confirms my connection is good to the PLC. I'll go down to PLC settings and I'll update a few things. For the PLC, always update variables. I'm going to override that to enable two always in the bus cycle task and acknowledge the pop-up. And in the bus cycle task, you can see my PLC PRG is listed here under main task. So I'm going to change that to main task and acknowledge. Now, if I want to connect to the PLC to verify that setting, I'll build and then log in. Acknowledging the pop-ups here. In stop mode, I am able to connect to the PLC. So the next thing I'll do is go back offline and expand the CPXE system. This will first allow me to add the IP20 rack IO. Now, if I double click the CPXE system on the left-hand side under devices and click actual configuration, I can scan for the IP20 slices to the right-hand side of the main PLC. So I'll click scan, wait a few seconds, and after that detection is performed, you can see here that I have the PLC at slice zero, and then one, two, three, four, five, six slices to the right-hand side of that PLC. I've got a 16 digital input module, an eight digital output module, a four IO link master, two analog output modules, and then another IO link master. I'll click apply and that'll apply all six of those additional slices under my CPXE system on the left-hand side. Now you can see that all of the slices have been added to that system. Notice that the four IO link slices here and here that there are no IO link devices connected to the PLC at this time. So I'm gonna minimize those. And now that I've got my CPXE system set up, I can minimize that. And I'll do the same thing for the EtherCAT master. So I'll double click on the EtherCAT master to open its settings. And we'll come back to that in a moment. By right clicking on EtherCAT master, I can click scan for devices in the context pop-up. After waiting for a few seconds, you can see that I get the APA and API detected. As shown in the bottom left corner, 
the first module is the APA EtherCAT field bus module, then the APA 4IO link module, and then three API remote modules. I'll click copy all devices to project. Note that if I had one selected, it would only add that one slice. I'll click copy all devices to project and wait a few seconds. And then underneath the EtherCAT master, you can see they're all added. Double clicking the EtherCAT master, I want to make sure that everything underneath the EtherCAT master gets updated with the bus cycle. And you can see here that if I expand the EtherCAT master settings, go down to EtherCAT IO mapping, under bus cycle task, I have the default EtherCAT task selected, which as of right now is in my task configuration, but doesn't have anything within it. So I'm going to switch that over to my main task. You could leave it in your EtherCAT task, just refer to another video on task configuration. So I want everything to update with my main task. Great. Now I'll go back to the PLC level, build, and then I'll log in with the device. When prompted to download the latest application code, I click yes. And then I'll start the PLC by pressing the start button or F5. Notice if I expand the CPXE system and the EtherCAT master system that we have the green uh, recycle icon next to each and every slice. That means everything's being detected and it's updating at the frequency set up in the task configuration. Now I'm going to minimize the CPXE system and open the settings for my 4DI, 4DO module, the first one. If I double click on that slice, you can see I can verify the current status of that module. You can see here on the very left side, there's all these LEDs next to each port that indicate if they're off or on, and all of them are currently false or off. By going to the prepared value column, you can see I can come to digital output 0, 1, 2, and 3 for that slice, and I can prepare different values for each. Now I can force those on and you see two lights came on. I'll switch those. And it switches from the left side to the right. So you can see that the bottom of that module are my four digital outs and the top are my four digital in. I can turn them all on and then all off. Now you verified that your CPXE rack system is up and running, your EtherCAT master and your field bus are up and running, and we verified one slice here. Obviously, you can add additional slices, throw valve terminals in there on both the decentralized and the centralized systems as you wish, and their addressing will be noted by double-clicking the individual slice and coming to this screen just like I've done with this four digital in and four digital output module. For additional questions, please contact your local Festo sales representative. Thank you for watching.